Uh, thank you. I'm going to talk about pass approximations, which is uh, joint work with Uri Faige, Vahab Mirokni, and Hamid Nazrzadeh. Um, and we did this work while we were all visiting Microsoft Research. Uh, so I'd like to start by illuminating you as to what this cryptic title means. Pass is a uh, acronym and it stands for parameterized by the signature of the solution and uh, so we're going to be talking about pass approximations here uh, and uh, the main point of this talk is to introduce you to this framework of pass approximations which we believe is a useful sort of guideline for designing heuristics. Uh, the basic idea of uh, pass approximations is that we want to perform uh, provide performance guarantees for heuristics that depend on some property of the optimal solution to the problem as opposed to the actual properties of the instance of the problem that, that you're addressing. Um, so we would like to find heuristics that are going to perform well. It's a single algorithm that performs well on easy instances of the problem as indicated by the optimal solution having a high quality. And it should degrade smoothly as the instance becomes harder and harder. Uh, so in order to describe this problem, I'm going to, or this framework, I'm going to motivate it and give you the definitions as related to the problem of maximum facility location, which I'll define in uh, the next slide. But I just wanted to mention the original motivation for this problem was we were trying to think about how to allocate banner ads at Microsoft and we needed to do so in such a way that we, we had to you know, decide which advertisers to accept. And when we accepted an advertiser, we had to guarantee them some amount of supply of uh, impressions from all different types of people. And so this problem was, we showed hard to approximate, but we still needed to provide some kind of algorithm. And so we came up with this uh, framework in order to guide us towards a solution for this problem of banner advertising. Subsequent to this paper, uh, Uri Feige and Daniel Reichman uh, have used uh, similar guidelines of passive uh, frameworks to design heuristics for the maximum independent set problem. So I'll be talking about maximum facility location here. Maximum facility location is a natural variant of facility location problems. So you have facilities and clients. Every facility has an opening cost, CI, and uh, we get a revenue of UIJ for connecting client J to facility I. So you could think about the revenue, uh, you know, normally in facility location problems you're used to thinking about having connection costs. Here you can think about the revenue as like this client, we get some profit for connecting this client and the revenue is this profit minus the connection cost. But most generally you can just think about uh, connecting client I to facility J has some revenue UIJ and that might be different for different facilities. Uh, we would like to find a, a solution in which every client is connected to at most one open facility and the objective is to maximize the revenue of the connected clients minus the cost of uh, opening the facilities that they're connected to. So this problem is not surprisingly inapproximable and uh, you can reduce uh, maximum independent set to the maximum facility location problem. The reduction's not very difficult. You take an instance of maximum independent set, let's call the vertices of the graph the facilities, and each edge is going to be a client. And now uh, the opening cost of a facility, it's, it's degree minus one, and the revenue of a client is going to be one if it's connected to either of its endpoints and uh, zero otherwise. Um, and now what you can see is that any solution to our problem in which we don't open facilities with uh, zero revenue is going to, each open facility is going to contribute one to the value of our solution and therefore the value of our solution is exactly the cardinality of the corresponding maximum independent set. So the problem is uh, inapproximable and it, nonetheless it's a very natural problem so people have looked at it in the literature and ways that people try to handle this problem uh, you could try to add a large constant to the uh, objective function thereby pushing it up and making it always positive and then you can hope to get a multiplicative approximation in this case or you could imagine that uh, your input is 
drawn from some distribution or the input is perturbed according to some rules and then give you give guarantees in this uh, way as to the quality of various algorithms. Or you can try to restrict the input instance and only give uh, good approximation algorithms for inputs according to a particular input instance family. Um, we would like to just take the instance that we're given and work with that instance directly and still be able to give some kind of guarantee. And in order to do this, we need to think a little bit about what makes an instance easy in this problem. And one intuition you, ha you can have is that, okay, if the opening costs of the facilities are very small compared to the revenues of the clients, then the optimum solution is going to have a very large value, and so it's perhaps going to be easy to approximate. And this kind of intuition would motivate us to define uh, an in, uh, property of an instance that makes it easy to approximate. Um, so we can define an instance to be alpha bounded if for every facility the cost of opening that facility is at most the revenue you can get from that facility. So here I have an example that is a half bounded instance. You can check for each facility, like the one on the left, the cost of opening it is four. And the cost of connecting all the clients, or the revenue of connecting all the clients to that facility is five plus three is eight. So uh, the ratio of the cost to the revenue of the first facility is one half. Similarly, the middle facility, the ratio of the cost to the revenue is one half. And the last facility, the ratio of the cost to the revenue is less than one half. So this would be a half bounded instance. And you think that, okay, if this alpha value is small, then we're going to be able to give good approximations. Um, so this is not quite right. And the problem is that alpha bounded instances are as hard as any arbitrary instance because I can basically transform an arbitrary instance into an alpha bounded one. How do I do that? I'll just add a new client and take my arbitrary instance. I add a new client. I connect it to every facility in the solution, in the uh, instance, and I set the revenue of connecting that client to, you know, it's, it has a constant revenue no matter who I connect it to. The revenue is going to be the max cost divided by alpha, and this causes every facility uh, to be alpha bounded. Um, and at the same time, it doesn't increase the opt by very much. So alpha bounded instances are still hard. And the problem with this definition of alpha boundedness is that it's insensitive to the structure of the solution. It was some property of the instance, not of the solution. And our key insight is that we need to give a definition that's a property of the solution of the instance rather than the instance itself. So. There has actually been some prior work that kind of followed these lines. Uh, there's a paper of Kleinberg, Papa Dimitri, and uh, Raghavan in 2004 that's looking at what they call the catalog segmentation problem. It's essentially the maximum facility location problem in which all the opening costs are uh, one. And uh, they defined it a solution. So in, instance uh, and a s corresponding solution is alpha bounded if the total opening cost of all the facilities in that solution is at most an alpha fraction of the total revenue of that solution. Um, so now this, they've ta basically taken this alpha bounded property that I tried to define on an instance, they've transported it to a definition about the solution to the instance. So we look at all the opening costs of the facilities in the solution, and we only care about those guys' opening costs. And we uh, ask that their opening cost is at most an alpha fraction of the total revenue generated by that solution. Um, and then they gave this guarantee that said, OK, if you're dealing with an instance which has an alpha bounded solution, then some greedy algorithm that they define is going to be a constant approximation where the constant is a function of this alpha. Um, and the constant's going to 10 to 1 as alpha tends to 0, which captures our intuition that if the opening costs are very small compared to the revenues, then we should be able to get a good approximation. Uh, one thing to note here, uh, which is also going to hold for our work, is that they talked about 
uh, uh, getting an alpha or an, an approximation, which is a function of alpha, where alpha is a property of some solution. It did not necessarily have to be the optimal solution to the problem. There could be solutions that are not optimal that have a better alpha. And this guarantee that they provide works for any alpha bounded solution. So you can take the, the best solution in terms of this alpha parameter instead of in terms of the optimal uh, solution to the problem. But for the sake of understanding this, you might as well think about this as being the optimal solution to the problem. Um, okay, so our framework, uh, we want to try and generalize this notion uh, in a way that's going to make the framework sensitive to the impact of individual facilities. So in the maximum facility location, unlike the catalog segmentation problem, the opening costs are not uniform. And we need to refine the notion of uh, what makes a solution easy in order to capture the non-uniformity among the various facilities. Uh, so we're going to look at a solution and we're going to define something we call the signature of the solution, which is meant to capture how easy the solution is. And then we're going to express the approximation ratio as a function of this signature of the solution of the instance. Uh, how the, we have what we call a recoverable value, which transforms the signature of uh, the s solution into the amount of value we hope to reap from that solution. And uh, we're going to design instance blind algorithms that are always able to generate this recoverable value on any instance. Something nice about our framework is that uh, we're able to show that it's NP hard to get more than the recoverable value. And I'll briefly return to how we uh, formally can state such a result when I give you the definitions of signature and recoverable value. So, uh, I'd like to introduce the signatures and the recoverable values in the, uh, the next few slides. Recall that the signature is supposed to capture some property that make, of a solution that makes it easy to approximate. And then the recoverable value is going to be a function of this signature. And it is uh, uh, trying to capture for any solution that has that particular signature. The recover, we should be able to get this target value from that solution. That's what the recoverable value is. And we define the recoverable value element-wise, or in this case, uh, in the maximum facility location problem, it's a function of all the facilities in the uh, solution. So each facility in the solution has a recoverable value. And we want our solution to get at least that recoverable, uh, the sum of those recoverable values. Um, so, in particular, in, in our framework, we're going to take this alpha notion and we're going to talk about the alpha value, which is the ratio of cost to revenue, of each of the facilities in the optimal solution. And then we're going to try and get a uh, heuristic that gets the total value that's the sum of these uh, recoverable values of the facilities in the optimal solution, these alpha values of the facilities in the optimal solution. So, before I uh, give you the, how this works out in maximum facility location problem. I want to uh, give you some idea about why we like this framework. So recall that uh, our goal is to come up with a solution whose value is at least the sum of these recoverable values. And there are some very useful properties about this framework. Uh, first, as I've mentioned all along, we work with the instance itself and we give an instance blind heuristic that's going to give you good approximations when possible according to this definition of recoverable value. Second, our recoverable value I mentioned was going to be defined, we talk about how much value we can recover from each of the facilities in the optimal solution. This means that uh, First of all, our measure is going to be more sensitive than aggregate measures like the alpha boundedness that was previously defined. Um, and it thereby uh, allows you to talk about instances in which the opening costs are not uniform. Um, but also, it has a nice additive property. If we take two separate instances 
and we take the union of these instances, the recoverable value is the sum of the recoverable values on each of the instances separately, which has a nice conceptual uh, aspect. And third, and I'll try to illustrate this in the case of maximum facility location, the framework is prescriptive. It kind of guides you towards both the design and the selection of different heuristics. Okay, so I'd like to now define the signatures and recoverable value for the maximum facility location problem. Uh, I'm gonna do this via example. So here's an instance of the maximum facility location problem. The facilities are on the top, the opening costs are listed up there, the clients are on the bottom, and uh, the revenue of connecting a client to any particular facility is labeled with the edge, uh, the weight of the edge. Um, I'm considering, remember the signature is a property of the solution, not of the instance. So here my, uh, the solution that I'm going to define the signature for is the one in which the facilities that are in green, the first, second, and fourth facility, are open and the clients are connected to the facilities as indicated by the solid lines. So here's the signature. It's a uh, I'll first define the expanded signature, which is perhaps a little easier to uh, understand. It's a collection of pairs, one pair for each facility. And the first element of the pair is going to be the fraction of the solution revenue that's generated by this facility. And the second element of the pair is the ratio of the cost of the facility to its revenue. So here you can see that, okay, the first facility, the one on the left, uh, it has, it generates a revenue of eight, and the total revenue of this solution is eight plus two plus two plus four, which is 16. So the facility on the left generates half the revenue of the solution. So that's why we have a half in the first element of the first pair. And what's the alpha value? That's the ratio of the cost of that facility to its revenue. So its cost is four, its revenue is eight, therefore its alpha value is one half. So you can similarly check that the second uh, facility has uh, one quarter of the solution's revenue with an alpha value of half, whereas the third facility has one quarter of the solution's revenue with an alpha value of three quarters. Now, the alpha value is what's really important about how much value we can recover from any particular facility. So I am going to just collapse all the pairs that have the same alpha value to get what I call the signature. So here you see that the first two pairs both had an alpha value of one half, so I collapse those pairs, summing their revenue contributions, and the signature is now looking through all the uh, different possible alpha values and counting the fraction of the revenue that we get from that alpha value. So each pair is the fraction of the solution revenue generated by facilities with this particular alpha value. Um, I could have talked, I guess, about all the positive results using just the expanded signature. The signature notion is useful when you want to say things like the uh, prob it's NP hard to get better than some uh, approximation ratio because now this signature, I can look at a family of Grow instances of growing size that all have the same signature. Okay, so that's that's why this is here. Um, and then the third notion, which is, in, I'm talk, telling you what it is just because it relates to what had been previously defined when we're looking at the catalog segmentation problem, is the summary signature, which is just the ratio of the total cost to the total revenue. So here the total cost is four plus two plus three is nine and the total revenue, as we discussed, was 16. So that would be the summary signature, and this uh, is a uh, bijection with the uh, notion defined in the uh, KPR paper. Okay, so why is the recoverable value, uh, or what is the recoverable value given the signature? So the recoverable value is supposed to tell me how much revenue I can get from uh, each of the facilities in the solution. So I look at a solution with some particular signature and let's first think about how much does opt get from, how much does that solution itself get from each of the uh, uh, elements of its signature. And I claim, and it's not hard to see, I'm not going to go through the formula on the slide, but uh, the opt is getting, uh, if the 
pairs are QI alpha I, where QI is the fraction of revenue uh, that is contributed by facilities with alpha value alpha I, then opt is getting QI times 1 minus alpha I. And our goal is to get something just slightly less. We want to, we want to guarantee that from facilities with alpha value alpha I, we're going to get QI times 1 minus alpha I plus alpha I log alpha I. Now alpha is less than 1, so that last term is negative. So we're going to try and get something that's just an additively slightly less than what opt is getting. And this is our recoverable value. Now let's do a sanity check here. Uh, the recoverable value was supposed to be like if alpha, the ratio of cost to revenue was very small, so the facilities have low opening costs compared to the amount of revenue they generate, then we wanted to be able to recover a lot of the value. So when alpha goes to zero, we hope that this vi goes to uh, qi times one minus alpha i, and indeed as alpha i goes to zero, these two uh, both opt and us recover qi. Alternatively, uh, when alpha i goes to 1, so your amount of revenue you're generating is comparable to the cost of opening your facility, you're intuitively thinking, okay, you're not going to be able to get much from those guys. And indeed, as alpha goes to 1, this vi becomes 0. Okay, so this kind of matches our intuition on the two ends. And uh, in fact, what we can show is that uh, for any instance and target solution, which you can think of as the optimal solution to the problem, uh, the greedy, we, de we define two heuristics, <laughs> greedy rate and LP based uh, heuristics, that have uh, value at least the sum of these recoverable values. That was our goal. In terms of this uh, summary signature, if you want to compare our results to the prior work, uh, we're going to guarantee an approximation ratio of the recoverable value divided by the opt in terms of alpha, so the, the thing written in orange on the slide. Um, and this improves the uh, KP and generalizes the KPR result. Uh, we also are able to show that it's NP hard to generate more than the recoverable value. And this is by using the summary, using the signature uh, and a family of instances all with the same signature and giving a reduction here. Um, so, in the remainder of the talk, I'd like to present to you the uh, algorithms that give you the recoverable value. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I think one of the powerful things about this framework is that it guides you in your selection of heuristics. And so I want to present to you the, you know, if you wanted to define a greedy algorithm, what might you do? You can define two very natural greedy rules for this problem. and. I maybe I'm not that experienced in designing heuristics, but I, I wouldn't have known how to select between them a priori uh, until I started thinking about this framework. So one rule would be greedy margin, uh, and that means that at every time step, you select the facility to add to your current solution, which is going to maximize the marginal revenue minus cost. Okay, so I have a current set of facilities, I want to I look at each one that I could add, I compute the new optimal assignment of clients to facilities and how much added revenue I get uh, minus the cost of adding that guy. That's the marginal uh, contribution, the greedy margin algorithm. I can also look at the greedy rate algorithm, which uh, is the same as the greedy margin algorithm, but I normalize by the marginal revenue that this facility contributes. Um, I guess you can come up with intuitive uh, justifications for either of these algorithms. But, uh, and in fact, when the costs are uniform, these two produce the same solution. But uh, they actually do have very different uh, performance on some instances. So here's an instance in which the uh, greedy margin algorithm performs much linearly fa a linear factor worse than the greedy rate algorithm. So I have a bunch of facilities uh, and a bunch of clients. Each client has a revenue of two with the facility that's directly above it. And then there's this extra facility in the middle which can service any client with a revenue of one. 
Now the greedy margin algorithm is going to ask for the max marginal contribution. So the first facility it wants to add here is the middle one because the middle one has a revenue of six from the bottom guys or in general n and it has a cost of only four uh, or in general n minus two and so its marginal contribution is two whereas any of the other guys have a marginal contribution of one and so it opens this middle facility now everybody's marginal contribution is zero at this point and so it doesn't open anything else and the value of the solution it comes up with is two the greedy rate algorithm on the other hand uh, is going to look at the max marginal contribution rate and now the rate uh, of the middle facility is pretty low because we're dividing by six so it's one third whereas the rate of the uh, vertical configurations is going to be two minus one over two which is just one half so the first thing it selects is the guy on the left and then uh, thereafter the, it keeps selecting these guys and it opens all of the uh, vertical configurations to get an optimal solution value of six um, and if you look at the generalized instance here it's a linear factor difference between these two algorithms and indeed we're able to prove that uh, the greedy rate is getting at least the recoverable value so in some sense it was the right heuristic um, we also note that we can generalize this to uh, monotone submodular functions minus additive functions um, which is nice because submodular function maximization is working for non-negative uh, submodular functions Okay, so that's in the greedy line of work. We can also use our framework to help uh, select between LP-based algorithms. So here's a natural linear program for the problem. Uh, we have the cost of each facility, and let's look at a uh, case in which every client has the same revenue at every facility. Then you might write this problem to be, well, you want to maximize, so YI says that uh, yj says that that client gets connected xi says that that facility gets open so you want to maximize the connected clients revenues minus the cost of the opening the facilities and you can write the constraints that uh, every client um, can be served by at most one facility and the uh, integrality constraints and this problem is going to be, uh, this LP is going to have a linear gap and it's, we show that you can't round it in the paper. And the problem is that the objective value is not the right thing. What we wanted in our framework is to capture the recoverable value of the solution. And so instead of looking at these natural LP, we define an alternative LP which we call the recoverable value linear program, which captures that uh, recoverable value of the solutions. So we define the revenue of connecting a facility I to clients in T. You think about a bunch of different stars, okay? And we look at the revenue of every potential star, where the center of the star is the facility and the endpoints are all the clients of that facility. And we can define the recoverable value for any star, which is just the opening, uh, which is uh, recoverable value formula for the revenue of that particular star. And now you can write the LP pretty easily for maximizing the recoverable value. You just want to maximize the recoverable value subject to the constraints that, well, each client can be in at most one star in the, uh, in the final, so in the integral solution. And uh, each facility is the center of just one star. So uh, you can write down the LP. You also have the non-negativity constraints. And this, of course, is an exponential sized LP because we have one variable for every subset of client uh, slash facility pair. But it turns out that we can solve this LP using separation oracles. And then we have a way to round this, which basically uh, is rounding each, opening each facility with some probability that's proportional to the LP value of the star. And then if we have uh, over demanded clients, we just assign them to the facility that has the maximum revenue for that client. And this rounding technique is going to get us uh, value that's at least the recoverable value, which we show in the paper. 
the nice thing, so I guess the point of showing you this sketch is that there was some natural LP for the problem, which didn't help you at all in terms of designing an LP-based algorithm. But here is a, another LP that gives you a LP-based heuristic that gives you some uh, formal guarantee about the solution quality. Um, so in conclusion, I introduced in this talk our pass approximation framework, and I want to highlight the properties once more of this. It works with the original instance and uh, gives guarantees that are a function of the solutions of that instance. It's conceptual in that uh, if we have two separate instances and we look at their union, our guarantee is the sum of the guarantees on the two separate instances. And kind of most exciting is for me is that the framework is prescriptive. So it helped us select between two greedy algorithms. It helped us even define an LP-based algorithm which, for which we could say something. Uh, in conclusion, I guess the open problem, obvious open problem would be to apply this to other uh, settings. So as I mentioned, Feige Reichman subsequently applied this framework to look at max independent set. Uh, there is also uh, max cut would be a nice target problem for this framework. Thank you. Uh, so you said it's prescriptive in that once you picked a signature, uh, it's, it's well defined uh, what the best approximation algorithm is uh, up to some kind of equivalence. Uh, but I, I didn't get a sense of how you would choose what the right signature is. Is that is that still kind of more art than uh, than kind of well defined or? Yeah. So it's definitely very sensitive to the particular um, combinatorial problem that you're working with and. I don't have a great intuition about how to find the right signature other than you kind of think about what intuitively makes the problem easy and then you uh, try to find a way to create that into a summary signature. So for example, in the max independent set, kind of intuitively uh, the degree of the guys in the solution is going to tell you how easy it is to approximate max independent set. And so the signature is talking about the degrees of the vertices in the optimal solution. Um, but yeah, it's more of an art than a science as far as I can tell. <laughs> and Ian, the question is that could be two different signatures with exactly all of those properties, right? Uh, that you have an algorithm which achieves it, up to something, and it isn't too hard to get anything better than that. And in the worst case, so this will definitely be two different signatures and you could prescribe two different uh, one of those do the algorithms according to to the signature you sort of choose in the last side. Uh, in principle, yes. Do you have any commentary? Yeah, I also have a